a little peculiar today maybe because I'm wearing a tiara. I'm not exactly a tiara kind of gal, but this tiara actually belonged to my dog Ted. I bought this for him in celebration of his 13th birthday. And I was thinking of him recently because he loved this one treat that I made, make, I made for him. Now I make them for Jake and Tori. They are carob teff tiaras. And I wanted to use my teff. I think I've only used it in one episode. And teff is a gluten-free flour that's really good for your dogs and it's good for you too. Although I have to say this particular treat is not what I would call family friendly. It's not, uh, it doesn't have a sweet enough taste, but the dogs love it. And we're actually gonna do a little decorating on them too. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put in one cup of teff flour. And we'll see the color. It's a brown kind of a nutty color. And I don't know if you've ever had injera. It's a Ethiopian bread. It's got a kind of a sweet taste all on its own, even if you don't add anything to it. Uh, and it's also very fine. It's very cool. The next thing we're putting in is our favorite cup, one cup brown rice flour. Almond flour, I've decided at the time, go with the nutty flavor. So we're adding, uh, I believe it's a half a cup. Yes, half a cup of almond flour. <coughs> And I'm gonna whisk that just a little bit because the next thing I'm adding is my favorite carob powder and that's, I call it wafty. I think I made that word up, but we're gonna put in a quarter cup of carob powder. And there it goes, wafting away. Uh, <laughs> Good thing I love carob powder, carob powder. Uh, good for your digestion. It helps uh, your body absorb calcium. It has calcium. Uh, it's kind of my new favorite ingredient. So we're gonna put that down here. Sesame seeds. We're gonna use one tablespoon of black toasted. You could use uh, the pale color if you like, but toasted kind of adds a little extra zing. So I would recommend getting the toasted Stir that around, it's starting to look kind of pretty there. And I wanted this to be healthy, so I had added chopped blueberries, and this is a third of a cup, and they're dried blueberries, and they don't have any sugar added. So it's just naturally sweet. And can't use the whisk anymore because the blueberries get stuck. So now we're just gonna stir this around. This is actually a really quick, easy recipe, even in the oven. It's the usual 350 degrees, but it'll just be 10 minutes um, and then flip it 10 more minutes and you're done. So let's do this. And we're gonna add, and not so great with my left hand. I am definitely, definitely not ambidextrous. So excuse me for a second. We're gonna add an eighth of a cup of olive oil. Make sure that all gets in there. And then a cup of water. <laughs> and we're gonna stir that around. Right now it looks pretty goopy. I always get scared when I see this. Okay, good, goopy going away. Starting to look muddy, starting to look like my backyard after a big rain. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Looking good, smells good. And I'm sure everyone watching knows that uh, your dogs can't have chocolate. Carob is not chocolate. Let's do this. It's kind of fitting. Uh, to actually be remembering the tiara treats that I made for Ted since we have this coronation coming up and tiaras are very much gonna be in the news. Um, I did a little research yesterday on tiaras and wondered when were the first tiaras? Did cavemen wear tiaras? Well, we'll probably never know. There's no pictures that have cave people with tiaras, but the ancient Greeks and Romans did. 
And a tiara is a sign of wealth or a sports achievement, um, fame, power. And in this country, around the 30s and 40s, uh, it was also a sign of wealth and inclusivity. If you went to a white tie uh, party, uh, you were expected to wear a tiara if you were a female. Oh, that's the cool thing too. The Greeks and Romans, the men even wore tiaras. Okay, this is shaping up nicely. I do have some brown rice flour here to put down on the board. I don't really want to use too much uh, because it's going to change the color. And I was thinking how nice it would be if I had a rolling pin to roll out my dough. <laughs> Where is my rolling pin? This is when I wish I was Samantha from Bewitched because I could just wiggle my nose and my rolling pin would come across the kitchen. But here, let's just get this set up a little bit better here. I'm like, okay, what are my options? I can grab one from the drawer over there and risk knocking over a light. I can grab one out of the sink, but then I have to dry it. I think I'm gonna go for knocking over the light. So give me one second and I'll be right back. And we're back. Looking good. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, this is my koa. Woof! Wow, that is malleable. This is my koa pin from Hawaii. I treasure it because it, koa is very expensive now, very rare. I believe they have all sorts of rules now on how you can actually harvest it. I think the tree already has to be down. Can't even uh, cut down a koa tree anymore. I feel like my tiara might be slipping. <laughs> How do people wear these things? All right, we want these fairly thin and uniform if you can do it. I, in my test batch, because they cook so quickly, if you have something that's a little bit too thin or a little bit too thick, it's going to be uneven. So let's see what that looks like. Sounds good. It's kind of weird. It has like this nice little pop to it. Uh, here we go. We always talk about this. You don't want to lose the, t the points here. So use your finger to poke that through. And that looks great. My hands look horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but the crown looks fabulous and we're going to decorate that with some yogurt and maple syrup icing but we'll do that once they come out of the oven and they cool a little bit let's grab that that looks good yay have a spatula all righty i'm gonna cut the rest of these out and we'll be right back and we're back. I took the liberty of glamming up the tiaras before I came back on camera. Uh, this is what they look like. Joe and Jake. <laughs> He's like, ooh, that's for me. All right, I have three different colors that I used on these and I use natural food dye in my Greek yogurt and tapioca flour mix. You can also add um, maple syrup or milk or water to this particular icing if it needs more uh, juice. Juice isn't the right word. If it needs to be moister, if it needs to be more like frosting, but we're gonna find out. So I'm going to use this vintage little measuring cup only because it has to be equal portions. And I'm just gonna do a little bit because I'm going to demo how to use the piping bag. And the tip that I chose is the smallest, smallest one possible. 
And it is kind of weird to be using a plastic bag. And I, I hate using plastic in absolutely everything. But that's what I got when I ordered it. So we're gonna do. Ooh. <laughs> and Jake loves yogurt too, just plain old yogurt. So he's like ready to rock and roll here. We're gonna do a quarter cup of the yogurt and I probably should have put the tapioca flour in there first because I'm sharing. We're using the same little container here. And I see that I have some like cascading over that side so we'll go a little light there. Throw that in. That looks pretty even to me. Put this over here. Stir this around. And then the fun part comes when you decide what color do I want? I love these uh, natural food dyes. I think I mentioned before that I'm allergic to uh, yellow dye number five. So it's made me really cautious about what kind of dyes I put into my food and my dog's food. Um, my reaction from the yellow food dye number five is that I actually get a stomach ache. I mean, that's pretty bad. Okay, this is looking a little bit mm, cheesy. It needs a little water. I've done this before where I just want a tiny bit of water out of the spout and it goes So let's see, maybe I'll put it in this cup and then just pour from it. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Just put a little bit in there. Stir that around, looking better. Now you know that's gonna come out of that tiny little tip there. Okay, color. I think Blue. We'll use blue. Well, no, not on that dark color. Let's use yellow. The yellow shows up pretty well. I think white would show up pretty well too, but yellow makes me think of diamonds. Here we go. Stir that around. It's gorgeous, gorgeous lemon yellow color. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed. I was uh, rushing when I was doing my test batch and I didn't mix my colors too well. And I thought, ah, well, you know, it's gonna come out that tiny little tip, it'll be fine. But like one side of the strip was white, the other side was blue. So definitely take your time when you're mixing. All right, here we go. My favorite part, getting this in the piping bag. And this dries hard, by the way. And I think I did mention, but I'll mention it again, when I uh, baked my little tiaras, it was at 350 degrees, uh, 10 minutes on one side, pull out your cookie sheet, uh, flip them over, 10 more minutes and you're done. So these are really fast. All right, so here we go. And let me see, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Whoops, sorry. And we'll turn this this way. I'll do this upside down. I can read upside down, by the way. That can be very handy. Whoa, it's already coming out. Here we go, one. So much fun, I can't stand it. This would be something fun to do with people in your family. And a big diamond right in the center. Very easy, very fun. I actually, there's a lot more of these, but it gets a little bit overwhelming. I went crazy. I just sat at the end of my table, watched TV and decorated. It was a blast. But as we all know, the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. Jake has to tell me if he likes these. And he's gone off. He's on a walkabout or an adventure. Let me see if I can get him back in here. Jake! Jakey, 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 Jake! Oh, hello! <laughs> he almost knocked over a lamp. Okay, but he didn't. That's the key. Do I give you? I'm gonna give you the fresh one. Why not? Over here. Sit. There you go. Oh! Do you hear that crunch? We love crunch. Thank you for not swallowing. He, he almost swallowed it whole. 
I don't know. He likes everything I make. Maybe you're not going to trust his opinion because he eats everything, but he made a delicious sound when he was trying to swallow it whole, and I think it's a hit. Oh, my little mama. Here comes Tori. I'm not supposed to give her treats. I'm just going to give her a teeny, teeny, teeny one. Come over here. Here you go, mama. You want to sit for me? Tori? Good girl. Yay. All right. Thank you for watching. These are fun. Uh, see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and like.